Hello there, welcome to part 18 in the 10 minutes at the piano playlist. This video goes hand in hand with an article I've written which is, in the, which is in the description below. If you don't read that, this video won't make a lot of sense and it will seem like I'm rushing ahead, which I'm not doing, I'm just you know, contributing to that article. Uh, so we'll dive straight in because we only have nine and a half minutes left. Uh, the first thing to help you with your sense of rhythm, which is not the same as the internal piano, the article explains that in a little bit more detail. First thing to do is to use alternating hands, so let's begin with the left hand first, and you're going to simply use what you know first of all. So you're slowly uh, reducing your conscious interference, but you're building up trust. That will make more sense if you read the article. I'm going to say that a few times. So use what you know, and the major scales are of course what you know and what you have mastered. If not, shame. So, use what you know, major scales. What you're going to do is set a rhythm for yourself. Now, there may be a tiny delay between what I actually, what you hear and my hand tapping. You might think it's a tiny bit out. That's because it takes time for the signal to go to the computer. But when you do it yourself, of course, it will be in time without a delay. Um, I'm just going to sort of set my speed like this. This is coming from my internal metronome. This is not the sense of rhythm yet. The sense of rhythm is what comes is what happens on top of the internal metronome. The internal metronome is the steadiness and the sense of rhythm is what you can do on top of that steadiness, playing around being flexible but never actually losing that fixed pulse. And uh, so you're going to do this which is basically a physical representation of your internal metronome and to help you with the sense of rhythm what you want to do, the, the target that we're trying to get to is that you become a, an observer to inwardly to your internal metronome you can sort of in a way imagine it in your mind it's going tick 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 inside but it's not you because you're observing it so it must be something different and then you're also observing from like a center point outward at your hands playing around so this video and the article is to get you to that point of observer to what's going on which is a complete removal of conscious interference so you've got your internal metronome ha with its physical representation in your left hand and of course you'll be doing it with your right hand as well. I don't want to do every exercise, you can take them away, I'll run out of time. And you're simply going to use what you know, which is going to sort of reduce your conscious interference a little bit because you already know it, it's already there. And we're going to just take a few major scales. First of all, play in time. So keep it simple first, build, 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 layers, layers, layers. So it's going to get the rhythm and then using any finger playing on time but in your mind you're counting any time signature that you want so here I was doing one two three four five six but you could be doing it one two three four and then you'll start counting one two three four again that point where it goes from the final beat of whatever you're counting to four six seven nine back to one again is what I call a reset point and you want to feel that reset point counting to four it's fine but you need to get to the point where you're not consciously counting so let me just change my hand and I'll do that at the same with my left hand doing it and the right hand tapping which is going to lead me on to saying something very important many pianists think that the uh, left hand is for some reason where the metronome the internal metronome resides it doesn't the internal metronome is throughout your body from your from the tips of your toes to your head when you're bopping your head it's everywhere so don't get caught up in the idea that your left hand is the thing that's keeping time and keeping rhythm because it really isn't and I'll show you that in section in part three of this uh, video um, so that's the first part of part one there and so what, what you want to do is take that and start modifying it so let's just do the uh, left hand I'll alternate quite a lot let's just do the left hand um, f with a fixed tap and now you're going to play uh, maybe off the beat But I'm, I'm still counting one, two, three, four. I'm still, I can still feel a reset point. Now let me just try that with uh, chords together, just an arpeggio, but uh, without tapping. So I, what I'm now doing is uh, my body is not 
is not being given an opportunity to represent the internal metronome so it's separating from it a little bit so what I might do is so I set the feeling in my mind I basically set the metronome program it into my body I can feel it one I'm gonna put a swing one and two three four I can feel that kind of one and two three and four kind of happening inside and I'm gonna display some arpeggios well, broken chords because it's only one octave We'll just take the take the key of E flat. I'll do some E flat major chord, very simple. And what I'm feeling already is this inside three, four, one, and two. I can feel it, and I'm going to play on top of it. This is the sense of rhythm. So I'm starting to detach myself from that fixed internal metronome ticker. So let me just go now to three, four. I can feel it. Playing anything here. Still playing what I know, the, uh, the E flat major chord. Uh, so do that with things that you know, because it means that you're not thinking about too many things. And of course, modify the tempo, mo uh, change the key, of course, change the area that you're doing it, personalize the idea. So use what you know and just play on the beat and off the beat. That's part one, but always keep thinking about one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever the time signature is that you want to play with. The second uh, thing that um, I've come up with is to do with random notes. And this is quite fun in a way. So you can just take some notes from the chromatic scale and you feel the one, two, three, four happening, or whatever the time signature is, at whatever tempo you want, starting on any note, and this time with both hands, playing any notes. So by taking chromatic ideas, it just doesn't matter what you're doing. You can you can jump around, but just playing random notes from the chromatic scale, but you're always thinking, well, you're not that you're observing that internal ticker, but on the on the inside, but on the outside, you're observing the sense of rhythm the colour, if you like, of the rhythm being on top of that fixed ticker inside the internal metronome. So let me just play anything. I've let me just set my let me just tell you what I can feel on my internal metronome. So again, it's just gonna be that simple one, two, three, four. Very simple. At that speed, which is about 120 beats per minute, I suppose. It's kind of two a second, isn't it? Something like that. And I'm just going to literally play the same note with two hands, of course, personalize it, play different notes, do major scales, play parts of songs that you know. And I'm just going to play random sections of chromatic uh, lines. So you can do this with songs you know, but uh, playing random notes is better for part two. Uh, and it gives you that freedom, that sense of freedom. So let me just start on the B flat, no reason. So I'm j I've got that ticker inside, I'm going to go... I'm just going to use correct fingering that comes naturally. I'm not just going to focus on one finger. So I might go. Now what I'm doing, it might not sound like anything to you because it's not a melody, but I've inside, when you do this, you're going to feel inside that one, two, three, four. what I'm doing but I'm not doing a physical representation of it it's just happening it's always there but none of my other body parts are moving my, I'm not tapping my foot I can just feel it inside so first of all do things that you know second do random things so there's, you're, there's a lot less conscious uh, involvement again third thing to finish because it's all in the article primarily this is just the, of course a demonstration of what I was talking about it doesn't need to be long is to do it with uh, chord progressions. So the most common chord progressions are the one, four, five, which is basically C, F, and G, for example, in all 12 keys. You can play them as major sevens, dominant sevens, any chord type that you want, not too important. But to play around with them, it just sounds like nothing, but what I'm doing is giving that internal metronome freedom to just be going tick 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 on its own and I'm playing freely on top of it you could say from the inspirational source and of course if you're doing that 
with songs that you know or with chord progressions that you know uh, all the better because what will happen is when you start to come to repertoire that you actually want to learn let me just take the famous fly me to the moon my demonstration song um, you'll see what I mean if I want to play fly me to the moon I can I can do it with my right hand without tapping uh, my feet or playing a chord or without the metronome but you'll still be able to pick up the timing so listen tap your foot because you can feel that kind of underneath you know you can feel that swing underneath so it's not coming from my left hand don't get caught up thinking that the left hand sets the rhythm it doesn't it's coming from both of your hands because they're both connected to the same internal piano that's uh, the main thing I want to finish with in this 10 minute uh, video hopefully that has helped you as always likes comments subscriptions are always welcome have a look at my books and blog and uh, I'll see you in the next video all the best and Bye for now.